Hi, this is Paul Palmer. This morning I've been reflecting on some of the experiences, some of the content that was shared during the uh, MHRA symposium last week. And one of the things that came to mind was the discussion about the pharmaceutical quality system. Now, most people would probably not think too much about it because every every year they come back with um, observations on the, the quality management and the quality system and the documentation. But one of the things that stood out to me this year was the discussion about people implementing a generic quality system. Now, as we move towards electronic quality management systems, this is actually more likely that you're going to implement a generic quality system because you have the basic templates that they provide. But then what people sometimes fail to do is then adapt that standardized quality system to their company, to their organization, the way that they want to run. I have been asked, I don't know how many times now, to offer a cheap solution, a discounted way to obtain a new license or to create or supply a quality management system at a, a lower price. And I understand that companies want to get to the, to the starting point. They want to start making money. But you have to be really careful. If you use a generic quality management system and you don't spend the time actually implementing procedures, systems that are appropriate for the company, well, you end up with what happened to one of my previous clients. They implemented a generic quality management system. They had a QP as a consultant who, who gave them a set of procedures that at a discounted rate, let's say that. They, they gave them procedures, uh, they set up the site and they declined the uh, application. At the inspection, the MHRA found that they were not up to the standard needed to get the license. They moved on to another consultant. The first one, I, I'd actually, I don't know if it was a QP, but I know the second one was a QP. And they didn't want to pay very much again. And she came in and, and attended the uh, inspection. But during the inspection, admitted that she had very little knowledge of the site or the procedures. And again, the MHRA declined the uh, application for a new license for the for the site. The third time, fortunately, they they used somebody that had a bit better um, ethics, I suppose. Maybe maybe that's not the right word, but I actually joined them, I supported them, and made it clear that they actually needed procedures that reflected what they did. Not just, not just a set of SOPs to meet the regulatory requirements, but actually SOPs that reflect what they do in the business, what their intention to do in the business. And of course, I provided them with training as well. I'm sure I, I'm sure I charged a lot more than the first two people, but the first two consultants didn't get the job done. Whereas I, I focused on what they needed in their quality management system which is, I believe, what the Medicines Healthcare Regulatory Agency were talking about when they said, create a set of SLPs, set up your quality management system to actually reflect what the business does, to actually implement a system, a quality management system, a pharmaceutical quality system, as it's now called in ICHQ10, to actually do the job not just to be able to present to the inspectors. Now, unfortunately, it's not the first time I've been in that position. Previously, I was there looking at a quality management system. I think I actually uh, talked about it on a previous video that had not been implemented. They'd created the quality management system, but it had never been implemented. Nobody in the business was aware of it. And with this other example I've just been talking about, the quality management system was created, but it hadn't been 
with the involvement of the team. And as a result, when it came to the inspection, the inspectors could clearly see that the team were not aware of the content of the pharmaceutical quality system. So it's really important if you do want to set up a new site, make sure first, before you write a single SOP, you understand what you're going to do in the business. Make sure you, I like to start with a, a, a process flow. A process flow that reflects how the business is going to operate. And on that process flow, you can identify the different areas that you need to work on. You can identify the different SOPs, the standard operating procedures, maybe some work instructions. Identify where the training needs are going to be, the forms that you're going to need to use, how you're going to retain them. Basically, have a system that works for the business. Train it out to the business so that all the business know. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say they, just the business, but the team, the employees, the staff. However you want to describe your own business, it's really important if you're looking at setting up a pharmaceutical quality system for a new application, for a new site, don't just take a generic off the shelf set of SOPs because unfortunately the inspectors will see it. And if you don't actually spend the time to understand why you're doing it, what you're gonna be doing, and why, what the documents are actually there for. You might get through the first inspection, if you're fortunate. But then they'll come back in nine months when you've implemented. And if you don't spend the time and put the effort in, you won't be able to go forward. So that's it for me for today. It's Paul Palmer. Talk to you soon.